Formulas have a really bad name. Formulas are what a lot of people hate about mathematics because it's like, oh, it's just memorizing, you know, these weird arcane things and then just putting numbers into them. You feel like a computer because that's what computers do, right? That's why we have them. But I'd like to try and convince you, formulas, formulas are brilliant because what they do is a process which requires lots of intense thought and concentration and they make them almost automatic. They just make it so simple to solve, okay? Um, things in life which are really, if you had a formula for them, it'd be great. It's just like, okay, I just do this, 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 and then out comes the answer, right? Well, that's what we've devised for quadratics. So, underneath your little subheading, write this. Now, what this is, is, well, clearly it's a quadratic equation, just like we've been looking at, right? But what I'm putting here are numerals to indicate these could be any numbers, right? Um, they could be 1, negative 1, and negative 3. Or they could be and negative 1. Or they could be 5, 100, and whatever you like, okay? So A, B, and C, A, B, and C are any numbers. So if they are any numbers, then this quadratic equation is any quadratic. Or another way of thinking about it is, it's every quadratic that ever exists, depending on what you want A, B, and C to do. Okay? Uh, by the way, A, B, and C, they're also given other names. They're called coefficients because they sit in front of these pronumerals. Okay? So there you go. There's a quadratic. Now the great thing with this is, even though I don't know what A, B, and C are, the great power of algebra is you can work with numbers even when you don't know what their values are, right? So see in all these cases, we know what the numbers are. But here, if I can give these numbers that I don't know, if I can give them names, I can work with them, right? In fact, with this, I can, just like I've been doing already, just like you've been doing, I can complete the square, right? I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to complete the square on him even though I don't know what any of the numbers are, right? So, we need to do a few things. You have a look at us completing the square, <coughs> excuse me, in these other questions, right? The first thing I need is completing the square only works when it's monic, right? I want there to be a 1 out the front, and there is not a 1 at the moment, okay? So, what should I do to this to make that number out the front 1? I should divide, right? Like, this is A multiplied by x squared. The opposite of multiplication is division. So, I'm going to take every single term, and I'm going to divide by 8, right? Now that will lead me to some fractions, which is not that great, but that's okay, that's okay. I can still work with fractions, it just takes me a little more time. So my next line, what does it look like? x squared, because those a's have cancelled. I'm going to write that b on a out the front, and then I've got c on a here. That's still 0. You happy with that? Okay, I've made it monic. But what's my next thing usually with completing the square? Um, I want this to me to a square, right? And I get it out of the square, over the other side. So I'm going to go x squared plus b on ax equals, and I'll put them on the other side. You okay with that? Minus c on a. Now once I've done that, now I'm ready to do this completing the square business. I've got to add a number that makes this. Now, what was that two-step process I went through every time? I halve and square. I halve and square. So when I halve this, I get when I not a twice as big, right? So I have b on two a exactly. That's the halving step, right? Sorry, it's a bit messy. B on 2a, that's the halving part, and then squaring is the squaring part. Okay? I added it to the left, to the I better right. add it to the right. Good. <laughs> You're starting to get the hang of it. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, this looks messy, but that's okay. Have a little bit of faith. Let's see what happens, right? Over here on the left, now I've made this thing, it looks it looks like a disaster, but it's a perfect square, right? What is it a perfect square of? I'll give you a clue. It starts with an X. <laughs> Shock horror, right? Okay, look, they're all pluses, so this must be a plus, right? And what's this guy going to be here? It's going to be B on 2A, right? Because when I expand this guy, it's going to become B on 2A squared. You see that? How that turns into that? 
okay? So I've got my perfect square factorized over there on the left. On the right, I've got a pair of fractions, okay? So I want to simplify this a little bit. What's this guy over here? Uh, when I actually square him out, the b turns into a b squared. What does the denominator turn into? Be careful. The 2 turns into a 4, and the a turns into a squared. So I'm getting 4a squared over here on the right-hand side. All right? Now, I just dealt with him. The reason I wrote him first is because you see how I have another fraction. When you add two fractions together, what do you do? I want to I wanna cross multiply so I get a common denominator. Right? That's what I really want. Okay? Now, at the moment, it's minus c on a. I want the denominator to look more like this. So how do I turn minus c on a, how do I turn that a into 4a squared? What do I multiply by? 4a. So if I multiply this by 4a, I better multiply the top by 4a. Are you okay with that? See what I've done? So this fraction is this fraction dressed up so I can add these two together. There's a plus sign there. Okay? Let's, have a, let's deal with this right-hand side before I... Um, get rid of the square root. Uh, there's a minus term first, which is a bit weird, and a plus term second. So let's just switch that order around. So I'm going to get b squared minus 4ac. Are you happy with that? Just written it in a sort of nicer order. And at the bottom, my denominator is still 4a squared. That was the whole point. 4a squared. Okay? It's still that squared thing. Right? Okay, I'm almost there. Uh, I'm going to continue the right-hand side. What do I do at this stage? What do I do? I take the square root because I want to get rid of the square. Okay. So on the left-hand side, the square is gone. On the right, I draw a big fat square root sign. I put everything on the right-hand side underneath it. And then there's one more thing I have to do. Remember? The root, but there's not just one square root. There's two. There's the plus and there's the minus. Okay, there's always two solutions there. Okay, now we did a lot of work here and it still looks really messy, but good because the a is by himself. I'm almost at this step where I've solved the thing, right? I only have to do a couple more things. To get the x by himself, I want to get the uh, b on 2a on the left. I want to get him out of the way, okay? So I'm going to write x equals. And because it's a plus b on 2a, I've got a minus b on 2a from both sides. Okay? So I've got a minus b on 2a, hand out the front there. And then I've got the plus minus of this big square root thing. Okay? Now, just before I write down something for this, I want you to have a think of a different example. Uh, if I said, what's the square root of a number like, say, oh, I don't know, 25 over 64? Okay? What would your answer be to that question? it would be 5 over 8. Now, the reason you have 5 and 8 is because, sort of without thinking about it, you've taken the square root of the top and you've taken the square root of the bottom, which is 5 and 8. Are you happy with that? Now, I can do the same thing here. You see, I have a square root of a fraction. Well, the square root of the fraction is a fraction of square roots. Okay? So I'm going to write that top part with a square root and I'm going to write the bottom part with a square root. Are you okay with that? Yeah, everything's looking good. Okay, now the reason why that's so fantastically useful is because minus b on 2a plus or minus this guy on the top. What happens to that denominator? What's the square root of 4a squared? The answer is 2a. That's where I got it from in the first place. You, you remember that? Look, I squared 2a, that gave me 4a squared. So then I can go backwards, right? That should just be 2a. And magically now I have the same denominator. Different. Yes, you may. So now that I have the same denominator for this pair of fractions, I can whack them together into one, right? X equals, are you ready for it? Take a deep breath. Minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC on 2A. Exhale. That, that is the quadratic. What is this thing means by completing the square, and it was a lot of lines, right? It was a lot of lines because there was a lot of algebra, and I couldn't simplify a lot of things. I to this line here, x equals, bam, so long as I know what a, b, b are. And you, as soon as you read the question, right? For example, here, 
1 x squared minus x minus 3, right? The second I see that, I can go... Well, all right. There is... Let me get one more color. There's A. There is... There's a minus 1 there. There's B, that second coefficient. And there's C, the minus 3. Don't forget the minus sign, by the way. It matters, okay? Let's see what happens. X equals... Minus B is going to be just one because there's a okay with that. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. What's B squared? It's just going to be one again, <laughs> right? Minus four. Now what are A and C? A and C are one and minus three, right? One and minus three. Okay. All over, all over what? Two A, which in this case is two. So now I just need to simplify a bit, right? 1 plus or minus the square root of, okay, minus 4 times minus 3, that's positive 12, right? So 1 plus 12 all over 2, okay? And then I say that's 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 on 2. Now you might look at that and sort of raise your eyebrow and think, hold on, is that the same as that? And the answer is, yeah. It is, because have a look at this. See how this 2 has come out of the square root? It's not under a square root sign. That's because here, I'll finish this and then you can go. Here, that's the square root of, remember I actually said it, 13 over 4. But that's the square root of 13 on 2. Do you recognize it? It's the same thing. 